Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Chanel, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janelle always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bye. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you'll be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. Feel where podcast can be found, and of course, taped live with the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Before we get into the show today, before we talk about stuff, it's, today's the 31st, so you have moments left in the month to order your Friendo care package. Well, actually, it depends, depends where you are in the world. It's, Might be it's, too late. It's probably too late. For Might most be of the world, too it's, late. Too, it's, it's too late. For the East Coast and the West, for the United States, depending on when you're watching this. Oh, man, I don't Oh, yeah, no, this isn't going to, even for these, if you're on the West, it's too late. I mean, you can still try to do it. Friendo Club, uh, what is it? Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Yeah. Friendo Care Pack, all these great stickers right well, here. On the West Coast. The West Coast, they have, they, they get have a comic a book. Like an hour or so, hour or two. If you're on the West Coast, you get it 8 by 10, 20 but bucks. Pretty much the rest of the world, you got to wait till next month. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I mean, you'll just have to wait to get it. But you can always, you can pledge anytime. For 50 bucks, you get all that stuff. The Friendo Care Package plus a cool shirt. And uh, really fancy holographic sticker right there. Anyways, patreon.com yeah. forward slash Stephen Larson. I think I, have, I think I wrote down in your notes and my notes that, uh, to talk about that later, but I just did it now instead. Well, I mean, that's good because if, you know, say someone in the, in the mountain time zone where it's just like maybe pushing midnight, like they get right the beginning at the of the moment. show, they could do it right now, get in before midnight, and then get their stuff next month. Right, exactly. I'll just, before so, we get started, I'll just give this quick shout out to the new patrons. Dr. Zoidberg. <laughs> Dr. Zoldberg, <laughs> Sean, Sean Taggart, uh, uh, Barracuda, William Knowles, and right in the nick of time, Kyle Sturman with the new, uh, with, with the, and he's going to, he's getting the, the whole shebang there. He's getting the shirt and go. everything. So thank there you, you very much. Awesome. AW, pretty fun show tonight. It was okay. Yeah, it was a fun show. It was fine. No, uh, I love I, that main we, event. I thought the main event was rad. Yeah, it was fun. I actually um, thought that Dynamite was better this week than it was last week. I thought it was really good this week. Uh, you could tell these tape shows because they have a lot more talky bits in it. Sure. Yeah, maybe. It seems like. Yeah. Um, this was uh, talkier than, than your usual episode, of, or I guess your live episode of Dynamite. But it wasn't necessarily to its detriment. It's just an, uh, an observation. I thought, I thought as opposed to last week... My main problem with last week wasn't that it was like a fun, it wasn't like a, it wasn't a fun show or something. It's just nothing really happened. There wasn't like a lot of stuff happening. This week, a oh, lot of stuff happened. Something massive happened. QT Marshall oh, turned man. heel, starting his own faction. I, I marked out so big for this. I did not see this coming. I should because like they do. There's so many factions, but the fact that he has his own faction of students from nightmare yeah, factory I like, I like that is such a great idea it's it such is. an Pretty awesome cool. concept because you know we're so used to things in other wrestling companies just being so drawn out that you like i just think that oh qt is going to be embarrassed here and the next week he's going to continue to be embarrassed and it's going to build and build and they'll have like a match and it'll be an emotional thing no tonight he gets embarrassed by cody who's just a, honestly a piece of shit and uh, turns on him. I mean, is he a heel? I kind of feel like in my eyes, he's a totally a face. I know that his no, actions seem no, very I don't think heel. He's a heel. It seems that way because it was the violence on the ring steps and such. I get that. Very We're trying to establish him on the heel, but it's not like Cody doesn't have this coming to an extent. Even during this this match, you know, and the build up to it last week, he said, you know, if I have an opportunity to put you in the figure four, I'm not going to sink it in. If I have an opportunity to hit the crossroads, I'll let it go. And, you know, there's like an instance where he could have put his boot to, to QT's face, didn't do it. It's just so condescending. He it's opens the, the ropes for him so he can get back in the ring. It's, it's just so damn yeah, condescending. It it's, it's Cody saying, I'm the top of the mountain. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. You're at the bottom. And, yeah. and of course, someone who, who is pride in their work, who works hard, it's understandable to see them be put off by that. Like what? I'm not. I'm not man enough to take your offense. I'm not man mm -hmm. enough to, to eat a crossroads or mm -hmm. to get locked into a figure four. I. You don't want me to and test find a my way metal. out of it. You know. 
Yeah. Right. You want to keep me down? The, yeah, absolutely. So he turns on him, starts what I'm referring to as, thanks to Ian Imhoff, our friendo, the Marshall Plan, which if they don't use that, I, you know what I might do tonight? I might design a T-shirt for the Marshall Plan. And, and send then, it to him. And send it to him. I'll, I'll put it out publicly on Twitter. Like, look, dude, the Marshall Plan, this is what you got to use. Because I don't think the government can can copyright uh, an economic stimulus plan for Europe from you know post-World War II. I, mm-hmm. don't think, I don't think they're allowed to do that. I don't um, think so. <laughs> so I'd say the Marshall Plan or nothing, Larson. We also yeah. saw the debut match in AEW for one Christian Cage versus Christian. Kazarian. Uh, and, uh, Christian, I mean, besides, you know, looking like he, he hasn't had to deal with the cardio aspect of being in a ring. I thought he he looked, he he looked pretty winded towards the end, but apart from like one or two little, uh, slight mistimings in the ring, I thought that came across really well. I thought the story they were telling was pretty good. They went a full 15 minutes. I thought it delivered, man. I thought it was good. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I think that like, uh, the one Christian hall of famer. Yes or no? No. The one thing I would love to see, though, is I thought this match was good, but they're kind of doing with Christian what WWE did with Edge a little bit in that when he comes back, coming back is the thing, you know? It's like when I remember Christian, I was sort of like he, his, his catchphrase, outwork everybody, right? When I think of Christian, Christian Cage, I don't think of a workhorse. I think of how like amazing of a personality he was. He was like a hilarious dude. He was awesome. He was good in the ring, but he also could bring a lot of the personal stuff, you know, the personality character stuff. That's what I think of. I don't think of him as like, oh my God, he's this amazing technical wrestler who could, you know, outwork everybody. So like, I want to say, honestly, I just want the dude to go heal. That's what I want. I want him to go well, heal. Well, I don't necessarily know if they mean by outwork everybody, they mean work rate. Well, that he talked put, about being a workhorse before. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, yeah. I up. think that means putting in the work to be good. That's part of being a workhorse too. That's how yeah. I but it. when Not I just, think of it, I think guys like Bret Hart who are like who prove it in the ring. You know, it's yeah. like oh, these guys are the guys who you go to for like the best matches. So you you think his his catchphrase should be outwork everyone, prove me wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do. All right. um, no, I All don't right. know. I just a little personality goes a long way, especially with a guy who I know. Like, dude, even look at the Edge and Christian show. It was hilarious. It was amazing. Um, I want some of that. I, want, I just want some personality, not just, oh, I'm back. I'm going to outwork everybody. Well, that sounds boring. I don't want that. I want the guy who makes me laugh and stuff. We'll give it time. This is well, his only his, uh, first match. Literally his first yeah, match. Yeah, first match, his fourth appearance. Mm-hmm, yeah. Give it time. First two appearances, he didn't even talk. Uh, nope, so, nope, uh, so nope. yeah. So that was good. And then we had uh, the main I mean, A lot of stuff happened tonight. But we had also, of course, that wonderful main event, uh, Arcade Anarchy, which saw the return of not just Trent, but Sue. Sue. And yeah. uh, Chris Statlander. Chris Statlander, which was awesome. She looked like a million bucks with her, mm-hmm. her little sort of Bowie inspired, whatever it was, thing going on there. Mm-hmm. It was pretty awesome. It was, pretty, it was a pretty cool show. Dude. It was fun. It was a fun yeah. match. It was a fun match. It was a fun show. For sure. You want to kick things off? Let's get into it. All right. Yeah, let's Kicked do it. off with uh, Christian Cage. Christian versus Frankie Kazarian. Uh, throughout the build to this uh, match and during this match, they're really hyping up the history between the two of them. Uh, I think they said the last had a match seven years ago. Mm-hmm. TNA. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, this match delivered. There was a couple spots that were a little, little, uh, a little, little rusty. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one where Christian was supposed to do the the backflip out of the belly to back and land his feet. Timing looked like it was a little bit off, uh, but minor things. Otherwise, Crisp uh, told a good story. Uh, Kazarian did everything he could to try to avoid eating a kill switch. In the end, he didn't do enough. Mm-hmm. Ate a kill switch. Yep. Um, uh, and I like that Kazarian's using the the chicken wing, cross face chicken wing. Yeah, that's cool. As a finish, now I like that. I like when people it's like Bob Backlund. Yeah, but I like when people just don't uh, say, "All right, this is my finish for the duration of my career." Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna try something new. Yeah, I like. That I like too. that. I appreciate yeah. that. You should always be evolving as a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Changing. Uh, so yeah, Christian picks up the win, uh, hits the kill switch, uh, and then you know who knows what's next for Christian Cage uh, in the future in AEW. Uh, I imagine he will have to go and pick up a few wins before he eventually gets a shot at Kenny Omega, whoever the t- the champion. Uh, is by the time he gets his title shot. 
Yep. After that, we had a Darby Allen and Sting video, a uh, little short film that these little things that Darby Allen makes. This one, of course, about uh, Matt Hardy. The mm-hmm. general thesis of this particular short film was uh, he talks about Matt being broken down. And because he can't gain the influence via his in ring ability like he used to, he's overcompensating now. He's replacing that by throwing money at people. And the influence and respect he used to gain from being in the ring can only now be bought. But he says Matt's money doesn't mean shit to him. Mm -hmm. He used the word shit. He's not the only person who cursed and used the word shit. Jade Cargill said shit shit also in her video package afterwards. Said when I, she's talking to Red Velvet again. When I show, by the way, I love these video packages with her. They're, yeah, they are yeah, perfectly they're done. They're great. She says, when I showed up, I looked and walked like money, and when TK booked me, I made money. Red Velvet, talk all that shit. You cannot be me. I am that woman. I am that bitch. It was awesome. Uh, Haha Jackson here in chat has the, a comment about Christian's work rate. Mm-hmm. Says he's an amazing feeder. The way he works, you don't notice how good he is. I remember when, when he signed with AEW. So many wrestlers were talking about, I think it was Dax from FTR. That Christian has like the best footwork. Yeah, maybe it's a situation that he's so good you don't even notice it. He's just so smooth; it just seems seamless. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. Com- Look, man, I, he's a fine wrestler. I'm not saying he's a bad wrestler. I'm just saying, like, I remember the guy more for just how much entertainment he provided me, not with like. Wasn't like I know he's a Hall of Famer, right? Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, Cody versus QT Marshall match of the uh, Q- candidate match of the QT candidate. gets a jobber entrance. Cody gets the full punk with circumstance. It too. They yes. brought it up. Nightmare Academy, Nightmare Family, all surrounding the ring. It, it 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 was all like, hey, let's all watch Cody embarrass our trainer, essentially. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Um, and, and early on, Cody had an answer for everything QT was throwing his way. Uh, eventually, QT kind of slyly pulls Cody down, maybe by the hair. Uh, Cody gets himself out of that situation. He's about to stick his boot in QT's face. He stops. Things start getting a bit chippy. QT starts going after Cody's bad arm. Uh, you come back from commercial. Cody hits a power slam. He's put, about to put QT in the figure four. Doesn't. Uh, has QT in position for crossroad. Doesn't hit it. Mm. QT then slaps Cody. Goes for a fun splash. Misses and tumbles to the floor. And this is when QT stands up. Dustin comes up and like pats him on the back. and He pushes Dustin's hand away. Cody sits on the second rope and lifts the top rope up to invite him back in. Yeah, he gets back in, all right, and just clocks Arn Anderson. Ah, just ah, clocks him. Ah, ah. And he sort of looks remorseful about it. He's like, oh, God, what have I done? He sort of leaves, and he's up the ramp. He's like, oh, God, what have I done, basically? And then he sort of turns around, and you see uh, it was Aaron Solo, mm-hmm. Nick Camarado, and Anthony mm-hmm. uh, Agogo mm-hmm. all attack the Nightmare family. It's like, whoa, they're being ripped apart from inside. Oh, it was great. And then they got the great shot of QT turning around and seeing it all go down. And he's like, ah, oh, the Marshall plan is in effect. Yeah. Oh, this yep. was good. This was really good. It was good. Uh, Camarado ends up powerbombing Lee Johnson from the ring into the stage. That looked oh, like that, that sucked. looked like it sucked. So then that's, uh, a Camar- good, that's a good idea for a shirt. That looked like it sucked. Yeah, we say that a lot. <laughs> Camarado uh, then lifts the ring steps up from the floor, puts them on the stage, picks up Dustin, who at this point had been busted open. Yeah. Uh, QT pile drives his former tag team partner Dustin Rhodes onto the ring steps, and then Solo and Camarado hold up Cody. Uh, Agogo hits him in the, with a body shot, uh, and then QT is set up to. He has his foot on top of Cody's head. Underneath Cody's head is the ring step. He's got a chair. He's about to hit oh, Cody in the I was head with a chair. He would do it. I wanted him to do it. I know. Red Velvet runs out. Says, "Don't do it. He's your friend. Don't do it." Uh, QT. Uh, he leaves. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping he would like do it to to Velvet and then to Cody. Yeah. Wow, do it to everybody. Just line them all up, bring them all up, get some of this. Long time coming. After that, Ethan Page is in a dark room. He's with Scorpio Sky. They're both in a dark room, and they have kind of like this dual promo where they talk about how AEW they're finishing each other's sentences, where they're talking about AEW not giving their propers. And uh, he's they say starting Monday they're gonna take what they want. So the page comes in and he's immediately in a tag team with Scorpio Sky. And I'm like, Ethan Page, you just got here. You just got here. What do you have to crow about? I he should have. He's like, oh, they got this terrible editor. You know, he keeps on editing my stuff bad. There you go. 
And uh, so like, that, well, this, say, uh, Ethan, this isn't impact anymore. Yeah, what the heck? He's like, oh, they're working with them. So they have a match on Elevation coming up yeah, on Monday. Against the brothers Seidel. Against the Seidelises. Yeah. Uh, after that, we have a Red Velvet interview. Uh, she's asked, why'd you go help Cody? She said, he's my partner. I had to help him. And then Jade Cargill attacks, throws her to the road case. That looks like that sucked. That was awesome. Velvet took that hard. Yeah, she man. took that, shut the road case. Man, she just, that looked like it sucked, man. This is like, dude, honestly, it's like a, I don't even know a good like analogy for this. But Jade just comes off like a superstar. She's legit immediately. And Red Velvet just looks like a chump at this point. She ain't going to win this match. No, I, actually, I like Red Velvet quite a bit. I think she's really good. She's really good in the ring. Yeah, but here's the thing. Stack her up against Jade Cargill. You can't say that anymore, really. Like, then what do you what do you say about Jade Cargill? She's well, you like, said it. She looks like a star. A multi, like a million dollars, man. Yeah. And yeah. Red Velvet looks like a, a really wonderful hand in comparison. Good hand in comparison. I like that Jade, uh, after throwing Red Velvet into the road case, goes, look, I broke my heel. Yes. Like she's just complaining yes. about breaking her high heel. I know. Like, great. Jade should be Goldberg at this point. They should do Goldberg with her. That'd be great. Anyways, after that, we had Mox promo. This dude woke up. No juice, Larson. No juice for Mox. He says, I can empathize. I can empathize with old <laughs> Mox here. <laughs> How, today, too? Also today? I know well, you mentioned me? that the other day. No juice. Oh, today was fine. Mm. It, was, it, was, it, was, it was neither a no or surplus of juice day for old Larson. It was just a normal day. Oh, man, I got to get you some of that. Oh, crap. You know what I forgot to bring in here? What? Is Dr. Lipkin in here? Dr. Lipkin got us. Oh. from Because I was like, who is this from? Because it, I didn't recognize. I thought it was like one of our sponsors or something sending us something. He sent us two big boxes of some Mrs. Fields chocolate chip oh, cookies. Oh, amazing. Um, so... Uh, I mean, maybe at some point I'll bring your box over or I can just keep them. It's up to you. Don't you already owe me some Mrs. Fields? I think I ate those. You didn't really seem interested in them, so I was like, oh, I can bring these over. I'll just eat them all in one sitting. <laughs> and I did that instead. Is that okay? We'll talk about it later. Look, dude, I'm about to have to fork over $100 for this stupid blood and guts thing. All right? Yeah. So yeah. don't be nitpicking over chocolate chip cookies. I'm just, you know, you said you're gonna, uh, the cookies run the line. I'm just pointing it out. Well, we'll see about that. Anyways, uh, if you want your what cookies, what did Mox talk about? If you want your cookies, they're here. He, uh, so yeah, the sound of Eddie's ankle snapping haunts him, pisses him off. Pisses owing him the off. owing the young bucks pisses him off. He has a headache. He's got scratches everywhere. Everything basically the thesis of this was everything pisses him off. Mm -hmm. uh, he woke up with no juice. Uh, he says that the Cesar Bononi, Bononi guy looks great. He says AEW can make a lot of money with him, but uh, that would, you know, he might actually kill him on Dynamite tonight, so that's probably not going to happen. Uh, he said, did he say he looked like a Baywatch lifeguard? Yeah, which totally does. He looks great. He does. Yeah, yeah. he does. Uh, that match was next. Mox versus Cesar Bononi. I kind of like this little faction they got with Bononi and uh, 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 Ryan Nemeth and J.D. Drake. Isn't Peter Avalon part of this whole thing, too? I thought he was, but I haven't I thought seen he was him. Too. I, I, I don't watch Dark, so I don't know why he wouldn't have been. I thought that he was like the leader of this group. Yeah, I thought so, too. Anyways, uh, early on, uh, Bononi gets some offense in until Mox starts working his leg. And then Nemeth and J.D. Drake keep distracted. Mox allows Bononi to get an upper hand. Uh, there's a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, commercial break, and those new McDonald's sandwiches actually look pretty good. Yes, they do. Lie. Yeah, I know. Especially they when good. they're they're being pitched to you by a uh, 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 Logan, what's his name? Roy? Oh, Brian Cox. Yeah, Brian I know. Cox. Yeah, Logan Roy. Logan Roy. <laughs> success. Logan Roy. My God, don't these chicken sandwiches look delicious? Yeah, they did look. They do look good. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> uh, anyways, after that, Mox starts to come back. Uh, he hits a bunch of shots on Bononi. Can't knock him off his feet. Slaps him and then suckers him into a, a German suplex. Hits a superplex. That gets him a two count. Right after that, into a cross arm breaker. Uh, JD Drake's distracting the ref. Nemeth is in the ring. Uh, he tries to take it to Mox. Instead, he eats Paradigm Shift. Uh, that allows Bononi to hit an axe handle. He's looking for a pump handle slam. Instead, Mox counters that into a sleeper. Bononi passes out. Mox gets the W. Uh, after that, we got Team Taze in a lounge. 
Uh, none of them looked particularly happy. Uh, Taz, Brian Cage. Brian Cage actually does enjoy it pretty well. He really does, yeah. Taz starts talking about, uh, oh, all these conspiracy theories you're thinking about or talking about. And then uh, uh, Ricky Starks very quickly cuts him off. Sort of calls out Cage. So I guess they had a tag match on uh, Dark mm-hmm. uh, where uh, they won. And he says, you know, it felt great. It felt like old school team Taz. And uh, Cage says, uh, he's like, but, you know, Brian, how did you feel about it? And Cage stands up and he's like, you know what? I think you should have tagged me in sooner so that we could have won our match sooner. And then Taz sort of says, oh, no, everything's fine. See? <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, everybody cool down. Everything's fine. Hey. Uh, this next, I thought this next bit was pretty great. So uh, it's the MJF giving Pinnacle their gift. Uh, he introduces them to their personal stylist. He also said their locker room is a dump. He hired an interior decorator uh, to redo the whole thing. Moreover, they could finally get rid of the disgusting stench of the bathroom. He opens the door, and the inner circle is just standing inside. And he closes it and says, all right, we got to go. <laughs> That was great. All right, we got to go. And he walks to the locker room door, opens that. There's Hager. He decks MJF. The rest of the inner circle come out of the bathroom. Huge brawl breaks out, spills out into the hallway. Sammy hits his finish on Spears in the hallway and then slams his his head in the door. Yeah. Uh, Wardlow and Hager are brawling in the trainer's room. Hager puts Wardlow through a massage table. Uh, this next bit was pretty violent. Uh, XLAX and FTR are brawling. Tully's laid out. Dash gets put into the ice bath. And then Santana tries to break a director's chair over Dax, who's already busted open. And misses. And so instead he's holding like a, a, a hunk of wood from the director's chair and is going after Dax with it. And then we cut to Jericho and MJF in the bathroom. Jericho sticks MJF's head in the toilet, uh, tells him the worst is yet to come, and then throws him through the glass door of the Pepsi mini fridge, dumps some champagne on him, tells MJF this is the inner circle's locker room, they toss him out. Uh, Santana rips off the pinnacle sign outside. Jericho replaces it with an inner circle sign. It was wonderfully violent. It was, was. fantastic. Like, yeah, the, the Santana Dak stuff was, oh, my gosh. I kind of like, I, I don't know if this was intentional, with the, the, the jagged piece of wood. I wonder if that was a reference to Tully Magnum TA in that, uh, in that cage match, the I Quit match. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what Magnum TA used to win. It was like a oh. jagged piece of wood sticking to Tully's head. Could be. Wouldn't surprise me if Tully was like, hey, back in 1982, whatever it Five, was. I think. 85. When did, t- I thought it, it was in his accident, like 86. Something like that. I don't know. Anyways, uh, after that, yeah, that was really, really cool. Um, after that, we had a Young Bucks interview, which was very quickly interrupted by Don Callis. He sort of shoes away Nick and Marvez, and he tells Matt, he sort of takes a scenic route here. He's like, Matt. You chose not to help Kenny. He's your best friend. He loves you. You broke Kenny's heart, Matt. What is wrong with it was, you? It was 85. It was 85. Are you dead on the inside? And Matt just says nothing. And Cal's like, I don't know what I got to do around here. You must be dead on the inside. And he slaps Matt. Matt just grabs him. And he doesn't do anything. And then he just sort of lets him go. And he fumes. And he's like, man, you really are pathetic, Matt. What do you think that's all about? Where do you think they're going with this? Because we saw them later; they backed up Mox against Kenny mm-hmm. and, the, and the Good Brothers. Is what's going? Is what? What's going to happen here? Well, I think Callis is just really trying to drive a wedge between. Why you know, wouldn't Bucks and Why Kenny. wouldn't Matt deck Callis? That's the big question here. That's that's the thing. That's yeah. the story beat. Why? Yeah. Because he's not that Matt Jackson anymore. He's not the Matt Jackson. Also, he's an executive vice president. If he hits Don Callis, he's another executive vice president. That could be issues. Because Don Callis yeah, is a solid. That's solid. He's an executive. He just can't be going around hitting executives from other companies. Can't do that. Well, I just I wonder if there's any like weird story beat there. Well, I'm well, number one. I wonder if like I don't know if there's a, a, a like an informal termination date on whatever this Impact AEW mm. thing is. I don't know if the good. I mean, the Good Brothers are probably going to get those titles back from Finn Juice at some point. But they might go to Japan also mm-hmm. at some point as part mm-hmm. of a trade. Um, and I wonder if this is going to get the Bucks as heels back with Kenny as sort of a we have all the gold type Well, I would situation. think, I know, I know Don, that's what's going keeps on, head. Don keeps on going after the Young Bucks trying, you know, why have you, you broke Kenny's heart. He chose you. Why don't you choose him? I think really what he's trying to do is drive a wedge between Kenny and the Young Bucks so that Kenny, is, there's, there's nothing keeping Kenny from him, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Just don't know why Matt wouldn't just clock the guy. I mean, yeah, what, what you're talking about is a very practical thing. He's an EVP. I mean, even on, in storyline, he's an EVP. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just wonder if it runs deeper than that. Could be. Yet to be revealed. So next we get the Lucha Brothers. Laredo Kid taking on Kenny and the Good Brothers. Uh, before the match began, uh, Phoenix and Penta had a little bit of a promo, essentially saying Kenny's luck's run out. Uh, Lucha Brothers, they beat the Young Bucks last week. Now they're coming for all the titles. Uh, this match was a bit of a slow burn, especially at the beginning. Uh, the heels, Kenny and the Good Brothers, just isolated Laredo Kid forever. Mm-hmm. Once they got the advantage, they just isolated him seemingly for an eternity. Uh, because the Lucha Brothers and Laredo Kid started out really fast. They were kicking the super kicking the shit out of Kenny. Oh yeah, hit a bunch of topes. Uh, but once yeah, once the the heels got the upper hand, they just isolated Laredo Kid. Uh, they look for Good Brothers look for a match killer. Penta breaks that up. Match breaks down. Uh, Phoenix head kicks Kenny. Penta follows with a destroyer. Uh, Phoenix looking for a springboard. Carl Anderson catches him, hits a spine buster. Laredo Kid breaks up that pin. Uh, Laredo Kid jumps off the top. Kenny catches him, but hits a powerbomb V trigger that gets him a two. Sets up for a one winged angel. Laredo Kid reverses that into a Rana, that sends Kenny out of the ring. Now, Laredo Kid hits a suicide dive here that's worthy of like Ray Phoenix territory. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Lucha Brothers send Good Brothers out of the ring. Uh, meanwhile, back in the ring, Laredo Kid blocks the V trigger from Kenny. Uh, Phoenix hits that walking PK on the ropes onto Kenny, and then Laredo Kid hit a nasty looking Mishinoku driver on Kenny uh, for a two count. Laredo Kid goes for a Phoenix splash, misses. Kenny hits him with a V trigger, one winged angel to get the win. Afterwards, Mox kind of slowly wanders out on stage while Kenny and the Good Brothers celebrate. Uh, as he makes his way to ringside, Young Brothers come out too. They hit the ring. Omega and the Good Brothers flee. After that, we had a Britt Baker. I mean, it's kind of an interview. It was supposed to be an interview, but uh, was it supposed to be Rebel. Tony? Ray, yeah, yeah, Rebel, Rebel conducted the it. Interview, I think Tony's yeah. supposed to. But it was basically just sort of a hype promo for Elevation coming up. Uh, after that, we had Ty Conti and Sheeta versus Nyla Rose and the Bunny. Uh, before this match, Matt Hardy did a quick video promo. He says, I'm going to make the Dark Order pay for the money I lost. But tomorrow I start getting 100% of my earnings again because we're in quarter two now. <clears throat> and uh, he's going to party after uh, Ty Conti pays for, uh, for you know, the Dark Order. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is fun stuff. Uh, finish Sashida. Try for a fun splash from the top onto the Hardy Bunch. Uh, but they catch her. And then Ty comes off the top also. Take them all out. Goes back in. Vicky distracts the ref. So Bunny gets a kendo shot in. Then hits her finish for the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fun match. Mm-hmm. After that, we had a Jurassic Express promo. Uh, Jungle Boy challenges Bear Country to a match because they keep on throwing Marco around. And then uh, Marco, they, they sort of give a shout-out to uh, Godzilla versus Kong. They're, they're sponsored the match next week, I think they said. Oh, yeah. And, and then, then Marco's Mar- got a new King Kong tattoo. got a new King Kong tattoo. And that, you know, it was Luchasaurus. Like, what the heck, man? I'm a dinosaur. I'm a dinosaur. Is God, but Godzilla's not like supposed to be. A, is he supposed to be a dinosaur? No, no. He's a giant like lizard. He's a giant lizard. reptile. Yeah, yeah, but not necessarily a dinosaur. But yeah. Uh, after that main event, Arcade Anarchy, Miro, Kip Sabian versus Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy. Man, I love Miro. Miro's so much damn fun. Uh, yeah, he's good. I like him. He's this so was cool. Funny. They had a lot of like uh, arcade stuff thrown about. They had like they had a, cabinets. They had whack a mole. They had air hockey. They had the prize rack. They had the wall the, uh, of prizes and the table. Air hockey table, which came into play yeah. uh, in a pretty big way. Uh, so, yeah, this was cool. Uh, they, they, I mean, this was a, actually a lot of fun. They do a bit where uh, towards the uh, middle of the match or so, Orange Cassidy and uh, and Chuck bury Miro and just a ton of stuff because it's falls count anywhere. So they try to get uh, a, a fall there. But uh, it's broken up by Kip. When they get two, he takes out uh, Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Uh, Chuck uh, brings a teddy bear. He sort of gets the upper hand again, puts Kip in the ring, brings a teddy bear out. It's very conspicuously has a thing, a tape on the back of it. He mm-hmm. takes tape off, and the bear is actually stuffed with a ton of Legos. And it was Ouch. oh, it was so much fun to hear Tony and Jr. react to the Legos because this is something that we've seen like on like in independent shows. I think mm-hmm. I don't think they've wheeled it out in AEW yet. Not that I recall. I think this is the first time that we've seen this in AEW. Um, I could be wrong about that. 
Have we seen Legos before on, on TV? I don't recall. I don't know. I don't Anyways. recall. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, that was fun. So uh, he pours out Legos from the back of the bear, but Kip ends up countering his attack with a sit-down power bomb on Chuck on the Legos. Orange Cassidy comes in, hits a DDT and a beach break for two. Uh, Orange Punch gets a two, but then Penelope Ford, but only because Penelope Ford pulls the ref off. Orange Cassidy comes over. Ford kicks him in the nuts, grabs her belt before she can do anything. They're right in front of the alien claw machine. And uh, Statlander sort of pokes her head up. She, like, shoves the window of the uh, of the, mm-hmm. of the machine uh, at Penelope Ford, comes back in, brings her to the apron, and uh, does a driver through the, t- oh, through the table, great. hockey table. That, that was, was rad. Great. Uh, that was great. Meanwhile, Miro is back. He chucks Orange Cassidy pretty far. Orange Cassidy and Chuck start crawling up the car ramp, and he sees Sue in her van, and she brings Trent back to the arena. He sort of picks them up. They gather themselves. They attack Miro. Miro kind of no sells it all, though. Goes up to the ramp to Sue's van, gets on her hood, starts trying to take off her uh, windshield wipers. Yeah. yeah. Trent makes the save. Trent spears Miro through the table that he had just that uh, Miro had just set yeah. up. Uh, Chuck hits a running power slam onto Kip through a table off the stage for three, uh, and that does it. Statlander joins the group for a hug afterwards, and they all give mm-hmm. Sue the thumbs up as the Pixies play them out. Um, yeah, it's so really yeah, fun match. really fun match. Glad this thing is over with. Uh, I can't Miro. wait for Miro to to destroy Kip Sabian next Wednesday. Exactly, because Kip took the pin here. So yeah, I, I like that. Bit. They had a shot of Kip on the top of the stage after Miro got put through that table, of him like, oh, crap! I'm kind of yeah. It's like four uh, on one now, basically. Yeah. And then and then Chuck comes from behind and does that power slam off the stage. That was mm. great. I'm kind of hoping for an awful waffle off the stage, but hey. Yeah, that sounds probably that's probably dangerous. too dangerous. Yeah, probably. I'm probably too dangerous. Yeah, but then we could wear a shirt and says, "Oh, that looked like it sucked." That looked like it sucked. That looked like it sucked. All right, let's go ahead and answer some questions here. Let's do that. Zoe Kinrana, Jade Cargill needs to take the belt off Sheeta. Uh, yeah, dude, and then have like a Bruno run at this point. Mm-hmm. Like she's so legit. I don't know who even like Thunder Rosa. Maybe I'm just thinking of mm-hmm. other faces. Mm-hmm. But my mm-hmm. goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, Hip Hop Hippos is dusted and blading on a regular TV match. Name a better duo. <laughs> <laughs> that is his favorite thing to do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, JTV08 says, Today there was a video on Reddit comparing camera cuts on Raw and AEW's main event in the first minute. Raw had 50... 50... In the first minute. 50 plus cuts. That's almost one a second. Yeah, I know. And AEW only had 11. What other what other production aspects do you think AEW does better than WWE? There's none of those uh, obnoxious zooms, the crash yeah. zooms, and the wiggly camera. Boy, you know? boy, I actively thought about that tonight when I was watching. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think it was the Sheeta tag match. Mm-hmm. I was like, God, it it is really nice just to see action happen. You mm-hmm. know, just follow the action, and you can't go wrong with that. Um, what other production things do they do? Better, yeah. The Zoom stuff. You're you, you're dead dead on with that. I think I think uh, AEW handles video packages better than main roster WWE. Maybe not NXT, but I think when they do, like for example, the Jade Cargill uh, promo bit in WWE, that would be like a backstage interview or something. You know, hype packages in AEW add to matches, and often I'm not saying always, but often. Like, there's new content in their hype packages yes. for AEW. WWE's, generally speaking, their hype packages are recap packages, basically. Yep. 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 Uh, Hellbringer Johnny, put yourself in Moxley's shoes. Bloodsport kind of scratched a niche. The exploding barbed wire match went uh, kaput. What would you guys do? What would you guys do to get that final huzzah? For like Mox to get that, I don't know, the, the the legit fight, hardcore match type itch scratched. Um, AEW Tournament of Death. Yeah. <laughs> AEW Backyard Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, 
I know that the end of the match fizzled, but like you can't disagree that that death match they did was actually it was, it was fun. A, it was a pretty solid death match. It was good. Uh, let's see here, Nicholas Price. I know that Steve is in the camp of it's not happening, so he may not read this question. But do you think we can get Inner Circle versus Pinnacle blood and guts match? I'll believe it when I see it. Every time two factions start going at it, oh, are they going to do blood and guts? Are they going to do blood and guts? Hasn't happened yet. It's possible. We'll see. Because uh, uh, double or nothing, that'll be one year since they did the stadium stampede match. So uh, they'll give us something huge at double or nothing. Mark my words. Uh, organ grinder, you think we'll eventually get Young Bucks versus Kenny Omega and Don Callis? Um, no, no, I don't think Don Callis no. is going to wrestle. No, I don't think so either. Dang MQ, JD Drake is a former Evolve champ. Mm -hmm. uh, his matches there against Riddle, Keith Lee, and Eddie Kingston were really good. He also is in a tag team with Anthony Henry in the Indies. Mm, okay. Um, I knew he looked familiar, or the name sounded familiar anyways. Uh, let's see here. Joe Horace says, at this point, rather than trios championship, should we get a faction championship? That'd be interesting. I think it should be trios. I think it should be trios. And I think they should do that. Yeah. Uh, Moses opposes. Does teaming up Sky and Paige this early undercut Sky's heel turn? I think it undercuts Paige's debut more than yep. it undercuts Sky's heel turn. I'm kind of surprised they did that because it's just sort of like, okay, well, you're here. We what else we could do? Really yeah. have anything for you, so we'll put you in a tag team yeah. with Sky. Um, and I feel like you know, I think you had made this point, but I agreed with it that when you have Sky win that face of the Revolution match, you don't do the match right away. Yeah, I said that match. Yet. Yeah. You don't do that yeah. right away. Build a story about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jorge D with some bits says, Tony Khan calls going in her offer ideas to counter program takeover stand deliver. Larson Smart sarcastically man. suggests, how about Cody appreciation night? Oh. TK says, great idea, Larson. Now book it. Book Cody appreciation night. If not the whole show, then at least book the Cody appreciation segment. That's actually a brilliant idea. We should get Cody appreciation night 100%. Uh, so he's brought down to the ring on the shoulders of the Nightmare family and Nightmare Academy students. They get one of those, uh, what do they call them, the, the sedans? Yeah, right, yeah, sedans. He's yeah. brought down, sits in the throne on top of the stage. Yeah. Uh, similar to the one that he destroyed at the first Double or Nothing, the Triple H one. Like an, an ungodly number of like cameos up on the Tron from mm -hmm. various you know personalities, celebrities. Um you know, maybe some sort of live band performance. Super obnoxious. Just super obnoxious. I, I, again, I go back to Cody has to realize, right? Cody's in on it, right? When he does this, when he when he lifts the or opens the ropes, he's got to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to lay it on thick on this guy. Yeah. This is a dick yeah, that thing that this guy yes, would yes. do. Yeah. But now does he think he's actually the heel in this situation, though? That's the question. Well, yeah, I mean, the, he, you know, the face isn't going to be... Well, Cody's always like, oh, I don't believe in heel face stuff. But, I mean, everything that QT did tonight screamed bad guy. Yeah. You don't threaten to take a guy's head off. No. No. Uh, heel Long Heavy, rename some AEW factions so they can actually have good names. All right. Uh, I don't think Inner Circle's a bad name or Pinnacle's a bad name. I think the logos aren't great. Inner Circle is a decent enough name. I mean, look, Inner Circle is as is probably a better name than the Undisputed Era. Yeah, to this Undisputed day, Era is not a good name. <laughs> it's really no, not. When I not. think of the Undisputed Era, you know what I think of? Star Trek VI. The Undisputed Country. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's because I'm a big fat nerd, but still, that's what I think of. Yeah, I mean, I, I I was slow to really embrace even Undisputed Era's theme, but I never really embraced the name. I didn't think it was a good name for a faction. What? Uh, it's just they were so cool that it was like, okay, exactly. whatever. You can, you know, wrong the right. <laughs> call yeah. yourself sacks of turds. I don't care. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, what what the hell is going to be the name of Hardy's thing? They said it was it was a Hardy Family Office. What? They said that tonight. Hardy Family Office. That's what it's called. 
the Hardy family office. Mm-hmm. That's I did not hear that. Yeah, they said that is tonight. the worst name I've ever heard in my life. The Hardy family office. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like it's not April first. You can't. This isn't an April Fool's thing, right? No, I think they even mentioned it last week too. Oh my God. The HFO. Mm-hmm. That's literally the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Wow. That's, yeah, it's not great, but uh, I don't mind. Like, I don't think Inner Circle's a bad name. Inner Circle's I fine. I actually I like. Think, I think the Inner Circle's a good name. I don't think Pinnacle's a bad name. The logo's not good. Pinnacle is not a name that lives up to the pedigree of that group. Yeah. It. You know, it's it's a it's a decent name, but it's like you could do better. You could do yeah. better. You could do better. Yeah. Um. Are there any other uh, Nightmare Family is a great name. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the Marshall Plan is a great name. That's a good name. Dark Order, I think that's a good name. Dark Order is a terrific name. I miss Brody. I miss Brody yeah, me Lee. Too. Me too. A lot. Me too. Me too. Uh, White Brownie. So with NXT now moving to Tuesdays and Raw being Raw, is it safe to say AEW will get close to beating Raw on both viewership and demo? Viewership? No. Demo? Maybe. No, we've seen them go unopposed before. Um, and I don't think there's any reason to think that that's going to, that you know, I mean, they might have a better chance of growing, you know, over a yeah. long term. And five yeah. years from now, who knows? From five years from now, who knows? Yeah. Um, but no, it's not not, not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, Zoe Canrana, what should Miro's first feud after Kip be? Darby Allen. Have him be that's the one that good. takes that TNT title off. That's Darby. good. I mean, that's a big deal. That's a that's a big deal. Um, I want to see him against Lance Archer. That'd be good too. Wizard of Smoke, most wholesome ending ever from a match people weren't looking forward to was one of the most memorable. When was the last time you were? Uh, when was the last time you watched wrestling and it exceeded your expectations? Triple Mania. Triple Mania. I thought there was no way they could they could beat Blue Demon Jr., Dr. Wagner, a hammer. And this year they did with those those like wrecked cars that they had mm-hmm. for no mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. Oh, Triple Mania. Uh, every time I think that they can't they, exceed my expectations. They always one-up themselves. They blow past it. Yep. Damn it, I love them. I love them yep. so much. Will Terminator, AEW, does literally everything better than WWE. I wouldn't go that far. No, I wouldn't go that far at all. I think that AEW still has some like weird production errors. Sometimes their stuff looks. It, the WWE has production down pretty damn good. It's just their 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 TV director is a is a you know crash zoom fetishist evidently. Uh, sorry, I'm baked. Says, what are your thoughts on Danhausen, and where could he go where the gimmick wouldn't be ruined? Well, I mean, he couldn't go to WWE. No, that's the, I think that's, that's about the only place. That's yeah. I mean, I don't. I I don't think he should go to New Japan. Yeah, I mean, they do promos, but I feel mm-hmm. like he's a guy who needs. Like AEW is the perfect fit for him. Mm-hmm. It really is. Mm-hmm. Like they have Orange Cassidy there. You can Danhausen would be a bigger star than Orange Cassidy. Which I don't know what they're going to do with that guy. Yeah, he, they really they need to start figuring out his character. Like, is he a person or what? What's going on with that? You don't know. Uh, uh, diehard Homer. Will Steve have an out if they have the Blood and Guts match, but it's a different name? Uh, if they don't, if they don't call it Blood and Guts, it's not Blood and Guts. Well, the concept is war games. It's essentially what it is. It's supposed to be war games. So if they, they don't call it blood type, and guts. The, if they have a war games type match, then it counts. No, it does. No, it doesn't. If they don't call it blood and guts, I am not paying a dime. We'll the whole idea. Right. We're not talking about anything. That's how it is. It we'll ain't blood and that. guts if they don't call it blood and guts. We'll see about that. Uh, Jonathan, do you think Riddle has remembered what he was saying yet? So, did you see? I can't remember who it was was saying that that was planned. Him walking off like that. Yeah, I don't buy that at all. If 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 that was planned, it's great. Here's <laughs> the thing, planned, though. Here's the amazing. thing, though. 
how smoothly they rolled with it to that bit with Rhea backstage. Like there was no hiccup. He did the thing. He rolled off. Bang. Cut right to a bit with of, to Rhea talking to somebody backstage. No, you know? they didn't. They lingered on Oscar for the period of time that they probably would have been doing that bit. They lingered on Oscar for a long time, and it took commentary a couple beats for them to say, "Whoa, okay, so Riddle's." Because I watched it a couple times. Oh, okay. I only watched that one time. Yeah, I watched it, it a seemed, couple times. It, it seemed it seemed coordinated enough that when I watched that live, I was like, "They could have planned that." I didn't think that because they they really awkwardly stayed on Oscar for a long period of time. I mean, it's it's entirely possible that they know that they're they're all professionals there. They know how to mm-hmm. they know how to work stuff. But like you know, when he's behind the camera, he said something like, "It's not live." It's entirely possible, but like, I'd be kind of surprised if if that was the case. You know, if they if it happens again next week, maybe it's a thing they're gonna do. But I don't know. Yes. That's just weird, but no, it wasn't. I don't think there was anything about it that just screamed, "Oh, this is this is a work." Uh, heel long heavy. Why would Scorpio Sky tag with Paige when the rest of SCU exists? Because SCU is doing their own thing. They got their thing where they're a team, and if they lose, they're not a team anymore. That's their story. That's their own thing. I love their. I love how they're approaching that too. It's like, hey, let's just not have any matches. At least well, on Dynamite, on, I'm sure. Are, yeah. On Dark, are they having matches? They're 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 the number one rated tag team right now. Rank, oh, sorry, okay. Rank tag team. Yeah, Play doesn't happen on dark. Doesn't happen for me. Uh, Kaufman says, "What famous botch do you secretly think is a work? Out of all the big botches, like, is there any possibility that Shockmaster was intentional?" No. Although I don't know how I don't know how they would think that would like he'd bust through that wall Kool Aid Man style as planned and that'd be a huge reveal. It's obvious, obviously just a stormtrooper helmet painted with yeah. glitter paint. You know, like why is that a huge thing? I don't. That's that's crazy. I mean, it was. I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that. That was insane. Um, some people saying Vince's quads were a work. No way, because it made him look weak. mm Hmm. Not a chance on that one. Um, this will be our last question, so we have to think think of another botch. Oh wow, man! Really putting the the pressure on here. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, give us another botch, people. Come on, we got it. We got to do a good one here. Oh yeah, well this is the this is the best one the bond the 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 botcher revolution. That one will oh. forever go down as like, I don't know. Oh, whether that was planned or not that way. Oh, this is interesting. Danny says a part of me feels Brock ending the streak was a botch. Hmm. That's a possibility. I doubt it. I really well, doubt it. I mean, I guess that would take everybody uh, that that was a party to that thing, retconning it after the fact. Nats says uh, that's true. I know Austin and uh, Owen. Mm. Um, that was brought up. Was that brought up on the SummerSlam? That was that brought up on the SummerSlam something to wrestle. No, I don't recall that. One of the something to wrestle with had them talking about Owen's wife's book Mm -hmm. and how she understood that that was a work or something man i i listened to it pretty recently too um and uh and yeah i mean conrad was like yeah obviously this isn't the case we all know that he legitimately was injured yeah um but you know talk about that a little bit so uh, I don't know. That was kind of interesting that that was out there, anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, Dagish means he says not the quads themselves, but the thing that led to it—the Cena Batista thing. Was oh, that... whether the double elimination was planned as opposed to that being a botched ending. Right, 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 right. And Vince coming out, running out there to restart the match was always planned. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a uh, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, Again, a possibility. I mean, that's you know, that's the the matter of them having done it for so long. It's like, dude, they know how to pivot. Oh yeah, know how to pivot. Yeah, um, 
All right. Anyways, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Larson appreciates yeah, I appreciate it, I'm it. sure. I appreciate, appreciate it. I appreciate it, it just as much. Maybe more than Steve. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson.